Waiting for those two chattering pair at the end there to finish that. It's that Jenny again, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good morning. It's really great to see you all this morning. It's lovely and sunny. Um, hope we're all feeling fine and in voice, but we've got some yeah, really good, strong songs today for you all to sing and raise the roof with. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Liz. I'm going to begin this. Um, Oh, I should say this as well. Somebody thought I was looking through my text messages last time, so just to prove I'm not, in case any of you see me scrolling away, it's because I've tried to keep up with the slides. Um, that doesn't mean that it will be perfect, but just so that you will, you know, that's technology for you. So, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and to the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So our first song, um, I, the Lord of sea and sky, tells of the might of Jesus, his promise to us, and all we have to do is say, here I am. So please stand. <laughs> Oh 
So let's just remain standing for the confession. Almighty God, long suffering and of great goodness, I confess with my whole heart my neglect and forgetfulness of your commandments, my wrongdoing, thinking and speaking, the hurts I have done to others, and the good I have left undone. O oh God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you, and raise me to newness of life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we, uh, we have the collect, the global prayer, um, and let's say it together. Almighty God, Almighty God, Father, we gave your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to pull out the roots of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of the same, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now we have all, oh, this is a good one, I love this. Guide me, O oh, now, great Jehovah, a song of hope. Let's take it. Be seated on first reading. Julia. Good morning, Sir Gabriel. The first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 28, verses 6 to 21 and 29. Make the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and of finely twisted linen the work of skilled hands. It is to have two shoulder pieces attached to two of its corners so that it can be fastened. Its skillfully woven waistband is to be like it, of one piece with the ephod and made with gold and blue, purple and scarlet yarn with finely twisted linen. Take two onyx stones and engrave on them the names of the sons of Israel and in order of their birth, six names on one stone and the remaining six on the other. 
engraves the names of the sons of Israel on the two stones, the way a gem cutter engraves a seal. Then mount the stones in gold filigree settings and fasten them on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as memorial stones for the sons of Israel. Aaron is to bear the names of his shop on his shoulders as a memorial before the Lord. Make gold filigree settings and two braided chains of pure gold, like a rope, and attach the chains to the settings. Fashion a breastpiece for making decisions, the work of skilled hands. Make it like the ephod of gold and of blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and a finely twisted linen. It is to be square, a span long and a span wide, and folded double. Then mount four rows of precious stones on it. The first row shall be carnelian, chrysolite and beryl. The second row shall be turquoise, lapis lazuli and emerald. The third row shall be jacinth, agate and amethyst. And the fourth row shall be topaz, onyx and jasper. Mount them in gold filigree settings. There are to be twelve stones, one of each of the names of the sons of Israel, each engraved like a seal with the name of one of the twelve tribes. And in verse 29, whenever Aaron enters the holy place, he will bear the names of the sons of Israel over his heart on the breastpiece of decision as a continuing memorial before the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Julia. That really brings alive the, the glory of those garments, doesn't it? So if you'd like to just stand and we will uh, sing, Rejoice, the Lord is King, before we have the second reading. Take our second reading. Thank you. So the second reading is taken today from Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23, then chapter 8, verses 2, then chapter 9, verses 23 to 28. Now there have been many of those priests since deaths prevented from them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives, lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. 
Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he has always lived to intercede them. Such a high priest truly meets our needs, <clears throat> one who is holy, blameless, pure set, pure set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens, unlike the other high priests who do not need to other sacrifices day after day, first for of his own sins, then the sins of people he, sacri he sacrificed, or of their sins once of all them, all when he offered themselves. And he and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set upon by the Lord, not by a mere, a mere human being. And it was, and it was, it was necessary. Yeah, right. Okay, right. Um, he sacrificed the sin once, uh, once, uh, once for all when he offered himself for the law appointed as high priest man in all weakness, but for the oath which came after the law appointed the Son, who has been made perfect forever. Now the main point of what we are saying in this, we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne with majesty in heaven, and who is served in the sanctuary and true tabernacle set upon by the Lord, not by the mere human being. It was necessary then for the copies of the heavenly things to be purified with those sacrifices, but heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than the, these. Uh, for Christ did not enter a sanctuary made with human hands that once was only a copy of true ones. He entered heaven itself, now to appear for us in God's presence, nor did, the, and nor did he enter heaven to offer himself again and again. Once the way, um, the, the, way the high priest enters the most holy place, ever every year with blood that is not on his own otherwise christ would have had to suffer many times since the creation of the lord of the world but he has appeared once for all at the culmination of ages to do away with sin by the sacrifice of himself just as people are destined to die once and after that to fight face judgment so Christ was sacrificed once to take away the sins of many, and the, will appear to a second time, not to bear sin, but to bring salvation to those who are awaiting for him. This was the word of God. And Thank you, Abraham. Wow, that was a mammoth of a reading, wasn't it? Thank you, Andrew. <laughs> Andrew is now going to take the service. Thank you. Thanks, Liz. So, um, you may have noticed that uh, just like last week, uh, there are crayons and pieces of paper out at the back. If you want to use them, feel free to get up and go and get them. If you want to, if you don't just want to sit and listen to me, uh, but you want to be drawing, and this is this is open to everybody. Uh, if you want, but if you're happy just to sit there quietly and uh, listen, that's fine as well. But if you want to draw, uh, there is opportunity for you to do that. And I'll be, you might want to draw this guy here, we'll be talking about him, this high priest, and we'll be thinking about this, what he's wearing and what he does. And then, um, or maybe you might want to, you maybe have another idea, you might want to place him in different situations. And you might want to think, oh, imagine him in, say, uh, imagine him walking about in, in the promised land, healing people and helping people, or imagine him being taken to a cross and dying, or imagine him, or all kinds of things, imagine, just imagine him in the situations you find Jesus in. And we'll be thinking about that. 
or you might come up with something, you might want to do a little comic strip of that, whatever you want to do uh, that is um, uh, that comes to mind as we go through this, you can feel free to do that and then we might display them afterwards if you want, we can display them at the back, the back of church, you might want to keep it hidden or, and not let anyone see it, but you might be really pleased with what you've done. Um, and the rest of us can be pleased on your behalf as well when we look at it. Well, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So here we are. This is our last uh, sermon on this book of Exodus. We've been going through Exodus uh, for the last, well, for over 10 weeks, really, we've been going through this book of Exodus. We've covered 40 chapters in 10 weeks. And there's loads of stuff we haven't been able to pick up on, but we've been following the big main story. And we noted some weeks ago, just before Easter, how this story, this epic story, just suddenly seems to grind to a halt. And then you've got all these measurements and these details about making a, a tent and making uh, clothes. And you think, well, what kind of ending is that for a book? But then, of course, we saw that this, these measurements and instructions were given for this model of the universe. And it's really, the living God has led these people out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, out into the wilderness to go to this mountain to meet with God the Father on the mountain. And then they're given this little, it's almost like a little play area or a little theatrical, presentation, multimedia presentation of the universe and the meaning of everything that anyone can get involved, can see and look at and say, ah, oh, what's that about? And then together people can say, well, this is teaching us this and these are the secrets of the universe and they're just being talked to us by this little model of the heavens and the earth. And we saw that there was, there was this tent, which was originally just one room, and then it was divided in two by a curtain, and that represented the heavens and the earth, and the smaller room was represented the highest heaven, and the rest of it represented the rest of creation, and how in the beginning, the heavens and the earth were joined together, and there was no barrier between them, but then we, rejected the Lord and he placed this barrier between heaven and earth and now there's, we can't get back to him. There's no way back to him. And so it's telling the story of the heavens and the earth and how is there a way of getting back? Can we go through the curtain? Who can tear that curtain down? Who can cleanse and renew the whole creation? Deal with all our sin and condemnation and reunite heaven and earth again. Is there someone who can do that? Is that possible? Well, these chapters of Exodus tell us that it is. There's only one person who can do it. And it's this person who is the great high priest of all creation. And a priest, when we think about a priest, a priest is really, it just means like representative or mediator. So it's someone who a priest represents God and human beings and it's like a priest stands between the two and says I can lay a hold, uh, my hand on the shoulder of God as his representative and I can lay a hand on the shoulder of human beings as your representative and I can connect you both together again. Who can mediate between us or go between us or who can deal with all the kind of hostility between us who can deal with that and bring us together and unite us again a mediator or a priest that's what that is about all the way through the bible the priest is someone who mediates on behalf of two parties and here is the great high priest who's mediating he represents the living god and represents human beings and connects them together, represents heaven and earth, brings them together, lays a hand on the living God and human beings and joins them together. And you 
We can read about that in Job 9. Job, as he's crying out, it's the oldest book in the Bible, and Job cries out, Who can lay a hand on God and me and connect us together? Is there one who can do it? And of course, he goes on to say there is, because he knows Jesus as well. This great high priest is the one who can unite God and human beings, heaven and earth, and join the whole creation together again so that we're all in harmony and one and get rid of all the rubbish, sin, decay, disease, death, all that, we can deal with that, get rid of it and make a new heaven and new earth that are joined together and enjoy peace and harmony and fellowship forever and ever. So, what is going on then in these chapters? Well, because we've got this little model going on and it's like a little theatre presentation or a little playground with this model. And then, of course, then, there's someone who's picked out to be uh, an actor in that story. And Aaron, Moses' brother, he's the first person chosen to play the role of this high priest. So he's play acting a role and he has this costume that goes with the role, like a superhero costume really, because who, who but a superhero could unite the heavens and the earth? And of course, so here he is, he's got his little superhero costume on, this Aaron, he's wearing this costume, and the costume is full of significance, and we might think about a few bits and pieces of the costume and what they mean. But here's Aaron, and in himself, he isn't capable of going right up to the living God and saying, right, you, and then bringing him over to human beings and saying, right, you lot, I'm going to join you together. He's not capable of doing that. No one is. This, the whole point of this is to show there's only one who's capable, and it is, well, who else could do it? But apart from one who is the fullness of God himself, and the fullness of humanity. And of course we think about Jesus. He is the fullness of God. The perfect expression of all that the living God is. He is God sent from God. And he has become one of us. And he represents us. So he's like a member of our family. Because he was born as one of us 2,000 years ago. So he's this perfect representative of us. And this perfect representative of the living God, and he is the only one who can join us back together. So Aaron gets to play the role of Jesus, and he when people watch him, they should be thinking constantly, right? This Lord God who rescued us from Egypt and is taking us into the promised land, this one who's been sent from the unseen Father in the highest heaven. And this, this visible Lord that we see, and he's in that, he, he's traveling around, he's living with us, amongst us, he's traveling in that pillar of cloud and fire, and we see him, there he is. This is that divine mediator, that great high priest, and Aaron is playing the role of him. And uh, if you're thinking, oh, what does all that mean? Well, you can listen back or read back on the book of Exodus and see what all that is about. But, so, Aaron has this costume. First off, he's got this, see the hat he's wearing, like a turban. And on that turban, there's this metal plate, and on the plate are written these words, holy to the Lord. Aaron, in and of himself, he's got all kinds of issues and problems. He's messed up in so many different ways. He's not, he is, he's got all kinds of problems that he has to deal with. So he has to be given from outside of himself this costume to represent the one that he's, he's the role, whose role he's playing. So Aaron in and of himself is just messed up like you and me, but he's given this costume to symbolize the person the role that he's playing and the role of the person he's playing is this person who is holy to the Lord Jesus we know no one could find any fault with him he went through life 
every day and never had a, did a, a wrong thing, never had a bad thought, never did a wrong action, never had like was never gave in to temptation. He's this perfectly holy, dedicated, righteous person with no sins of his own to deal with. So he's the perfect candidate because he to deal with our sins because he has none of his own to deal with that would get in the way and drag him down that he has to he has to deal with those he has none of that so then he's able to say well i can take on all the sins of the world and i'll i'll deal with them take responsibility for them because i got none of my own to deal with but i'm more than happy to take on all of yours all the sins of everyone in the world i'll take those on and deal with them so he's this holy to the lord divine person and as Abraham is reading this uh, in that Hebrews passage is saying the great high priest has no sins of his own to deal with but all these little priests here little copies of him and play acting his role they have loads so they have to atone for their own sin they have to do sacrifices to cover up their own sin but this great high priest he has none of his own to cover up he's totally pure and holy holy to the Lord he never lets his father down, and he never lets us down. He's no sins of his own to deal with. And then he's got this tunic and sash, and that those are given to him, that white uh, kind of tunic underneath. It's given to him to give him dignity and honor, we're told. Because in and of himself, he has kind of ruined his dignity and honor because he's so simple and messed up. But Jesus has all these qualities in himself, dignity, honor, holiness. And then he's got this robe as well, this blue robe, uh, which has these little pomegranates and bells around the hem. So as he moves around, he's quite musical. He's got these little bells jingling as he moves around. So people can tell where he is and tell that he's moving around. When he goes into the tabernacle, which of course only he's only allowed to go into the most holy place one day a year, but he goes into the first room and as he moves around, people outside can hear him moving around. And he's and he so what he's doing is not a private personal thing. It's something that calls all of us, just like the church bells did today, said, hey, there's something going on here. Do you want to be part of it? Do you want to join in, see what's happening? That's what the church bells did. For him, these bells ring. And it's like he's leading all of the people around him in, in worship as these little bells ring as he moves around. And of course, Jesus is described as the chief musician, the director of music in the Bible. He's the one who leads all our worship. He's the director of music, the one who leads us in worship to his Father. And, and then, of course, he's got these little little pomegranates as well around the hem of his, of his robe, the blue robe. And pomegranates, well, they're seed-bearing plants. They have as often as many as thousand seeds very like full of full of life and fruitfulness and one of the things that are promised to the these people this church as they wander in the desert and they they're looking forward to getting into the promised land and when they send people ahead of them to look and see what the promised land is like they say oh it's full of pomegranates full of seed bearing plants and uh, like fruitfulness and so as he walks around with these little pomegranates on his costume, people are thinking, ah, the great high priest is going to lead us into a new world, a new heavens, a new earth, a new creation that is full of life and fruitfulness. So that's what that little aspect of his costume teaches us. And of course, he's blue, blue as well. What do we think about when we see a bright blue sky? Everything's calm and at peace. It's all is right with the world. Well, I think that anyway. All is right with the world with a clear blue sky. And here he is, he's wearing blue. As if to say, oh, with me, all is right with the world. I'll, ma I'll make everything right with the world in the end.
And then just these last two pieces that he has. So you see he's got this kind of apron on him. And that's called an ephod. And the most important aspect of that is what's on the shoulders. You might remember when Juliet read for us. Onyx stones, sort of dark, or sorry, bright orange and uh, brown stones, one on each shoulder, and on each stone, so on one stone, are engraved the names of six of the tribes of Israel, and on the other, engraved the names of six of the tribes of Israel placed on his shoulders. Here is the great high priest, and he's carrying church, his people, on his shoulders. When, so when we feel, oh, I just, I don't know how to live, I just don't know what life's about or what I'm doing, I'm just weary, I'm tired, I don't have the energy, I don't, I can barely even look after myself, never mind anyone else, and he's like, I'm here to look after you, and I'll look out for you. And he, and he's called the great shepherd, the good shepherd who looks out for us and cares for us, genuinely cares for us, not because he's trying to get anything out of us, but just because he loves us and cares for us. And he says, it doesn't matter if you can't get up, if you've got no energy, you've got no life in yourself, I'm full of life, and I'm happy to carry you on my shoulders. I'll carry you on my shoulders. I'll bear all the weight of the world that you feel is on your shoulders. I'll take it on my shoulders. And I'll bear you on my shoulders. There's that great high priest. That's what he's doing. The names of church on both his shoulders. And then, do you see this breast piece? Just uh, under his beard, all over his chest. And that has got 12 stones, gems, and those are read out for us as well by Juliet. Oh, and they are, he, so he's carrying these about and he's carrying them over his heart. Twelve gems, twelve stones, each one representing all the tribes of Israel. And so it's this ancient church that's made up of all these different like denominations, say, and he's carrying them all over his heart. And even going into this tabernacle with them. And, and it's incredible. And imagine if he goes right into the most holy place, carrying us on his shoulders and over his heart, right into the most holy place, the highest heaven. He carries us right in, just walks right in with us over his heart and on his shoulders. And if you've got like a little locket or something that you wear close to your heart, that's not normally something that you, uh, to say to picture someone, it's not normally someone that you hate. And it's not normally someone that you, like your boss or someone, that you just, you have to do, like you have to work for. It. But it's normally someone who means a lot to you. You carry them close to your heart. What does that tell us about Jesus? What does he think about us, his church? Is it just like a duty for him where he's just like, oh, this lot, and they just, they just, I'll carry them, I'll carry them. They're such a nuisance. I feel so resentful of them. Losers. He's not thinking that at all. He's thinking, oh, where can I, where, where, where are they on me? How close can I get them to me? Where will I place them? I'll place them over my heart because I love them. That's what Jesus says of us, of you today. Great high priest carries you on his shoulders over his heart because he loves and cares for you and he thinks about us all the time every day he is constantly praying for us thinking of us carrying us before his father saying like every day all his conversations will be about church will be about us they'll be saying oh look there's uh, there's Maneksha she's had a, a difficult day today how can we help her? Or there's someone, they've had a brilliant, Brian's had a brilliant quiet time this morning. Let's pour out the spirit on Brian and uh, we'll fill him with the spirit and he'll have this day where he's able to share Jesus with people. That's what 
The Father, Son, and Spirit are talking about Jesus in the highest heaven, the great high priest who loves us and cares for us and thinks about us all the time. And all the church are, so this little tabernacle, this little model of the universe is situated right at the center of the camp. And as the church moves around in the desert, and they have to set it down, take it up, uh, put it up again, but it's always placed in the center of the camp. And all the church camps around it in like almost like four lines, four lines protruding from a center shaped like a cross, gathered round this little model of the heavens and the earth, where this great high priest is at the centre of everything. So that's, and so they're being encouraged to think, what is the centre of all of life? What's the meaning of everything? What's the mystery? What are the deepest mysteries of the universe? They're all about this great high priest and how he joins God and humanity together, heaven and earth together, makes atonement for the whole creation. That's what they're, they're to think about. And every day they're to think about that. And then you think, well, these are wonderful robes that he's wearing. It would be a shame if something got spilled on them. <laughs> but, then, but then we're told something does. So when a priest is ordained, he, he is anointed with oil. And it's not just a little bit of oil, but he's actually drenched with oil. So Aaron, when he's anointed, he's anointed with like a bucket load of oil just poured over him. All those lovely garments that he's got, this beautiful costume, covered in oil. And even like a king and a, and a prophet will get anointed, but they'll just get like a little bit on their head. The priest gets absolutely drenched with the stuff. And of course in the Bible, oil is always associated with God the Holy Spirit. And for, for Jesus, the great high priest, to do everything that he does, he needs the Holy Spirit to anoint him and equip him and empower him for all that he does. That's why he has that moment at the beginning of his ministry where the Holy Spirit descends upon him. And he's this great high priest who is doing this work of uniting the heavens and the earth. And he needs all the help he can get from the highest heaven, but he gets it. And we're told that Jesus is filled with the Spirit without limit. He's full of life and energy and vitality from this divine person, the Spirit, who rests upon him and equips him and empowers him for all that he has to do. Just one last thing. Once a year, on the Day of Atonement, this high priest will go in, so he'll go, there are bit, other bits of furniture we haven't dealt with, there's this altar on the outside of the tabernacle, then a basin where things are washed, so first the place of death and sacrifice, then a place of washing, washing of new birth and new life, so getting rid of the old life, then this new life, almost like death, resurrection, altar, basin, old life got rid of, death, new life, washing, resurrection life, then he goes in to the most holy place with the blood, some blood from the sacrifice, he walks into the holy place and then right up in, right up to the curtain, goes in through the curtain once, no one else is allowed to do this, only he does it, he goes right into the most holy place and presents this blood to the one seated on the throne in that room. And then he makes his exit, he leaves. And by doing that, he has made atonement for, we're told he's made atonement for this little model of the heavens and the earth. So if the, he's making atonement by doing that for this little model of the heavens and the earth, then the great high priest makes atonement for the real heavens and earth by dying, rising, and ascending to the highest heaven to represent us before his Father in heaven. So all that's going on. That really is a whistle-stop tour of what's happening. But the beautiful thing is that when Aaron goes in and he has, he's to play this little role, who appears over the mercy seat? But this high priest himself, Jesus, the appearing Lord says, I will appear and I will sit on that mercy seat and I will be the one 
that Aaron brings and presents that blood to. So just as Aaron is representing Jesus, then Jesus represents the Father in this little model. and He's sitting on that uh, mercy seat on the Ark of the Covenant. And then there's this wonderful little, uh, little story going on. He represents the Father, and then Aaron represents him, and there's this little kind of play-acting thing going on that explains how the whole heavens and earth can be, all, all this mess can be dealt with and can be renewed and united together. And in that very last chapter of Exodus, chapter 40, the tabernacle is filled with the glory of the Lord. And it's like it's saying, what are we looking forward to? At the end of, of this passing age, we're looking forward to the whole earth, the heavens and the earth, the whole universe being filled with the glory of God as the waters cover the sea. And we've had Holy Week and Easter just recently. Just think about Jesus as he's presented to the high priest in his day. And the high priest, he, his whole job is he's playing the role of Jesus. And then Jesus shows up and how does this high priest treat him? Well, he wants to get rid of him and kill him, doesn't he? And it would be like Helen Mirren, Dame Helen Mirren, saying when she meets the queen, because she played the queen, didn't she? she? And she meets the queen and she goes, who's this loser? And then mistreats her, wants to get rid of her. It would be like that. How horrendous is it when Jesus, the great high priest of all creation, is treated so disrespectfully by this little guy in the, this Jesus costume whose whole job and role is about Jesus but he's just like, no, nah, I don't want anything to do with him. And we don't want that to be us today. Today, we, we surely want to let this great high priest carry us on his shoulders and over his heart and love us and bring us into that highest heaven where we will be brought into the presence of his Father and welcomed to sit next to him with Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this book of Exodus that we've been thinking about. We thank you for all these great things we've learned about Jesus that are so clear that you've given us to teach us about Jesus and for your church down the ages to learn about him and how he loves his church and will do anything it takes to rescue us from our lives of addiction and selfishness and sin and corruption and give us this life that he has for us, a life that is full of fruitfulness, joy, holiness, life. Heavenly Father, we pray that today as we come to the end of this book, that we would call out to this Lord Jesus, the great high priest, and ask him afresh to carry us and to look after us and put all our trust in him this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Andrew. The great high priest connecting us to the Father, and connecting the heavens and the earth. I think that Andrew has really brought to life Exodus for us these past few weeks, hasn't he? I have a big yes. And I mean, for me, I think that I really, um, he's really unpacked the beauty and the spirit of the tabernacle. And I know that's how a lot of you uh, feel as well. So, uh, so well, thank you I mean, for showing us just how awesome it was in the desert. So our next song celebrates the great high priest. So um, Rachel will now play this and would you like to stand and sing? <laughs>
God. Let's remain standing for the creed and say together, We believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, and He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again, He ascended into heaven, He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the intercession. Let us pray to the Father who raised his Son to life, that we might live forever in him. We pray for our government, we pray for integrity, stability, and an end to the clamour and strife, so that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. We pray for our Queen. We thank you for her faith in you and her faithful witness. Grant her wisdom, right judgment and peace in all things. And in her frailty of age, give her strength to enjoy her forthcoming celebrations. We pray that you will look with compassion in places where the innocent suffer and authority is unjust. We especially pray today for the Ukraine. We pray for those involved in any negotiations and decision-making, for those fleeing homes and livelihoods, for the refugees, for those receiving them, for those who are fearful and vulnerable. We thank you, Lord, for your works of power in this situation, and we continue to pray for peace, justice, repentance and restoration. We also pray for your persecuted church. Give them courage to face beatings, imprisonment, lies and hardships, and hope to see beyond their immediate circumstances. Help them to live Christ-like lives and to continue to worship and witness. May they know that they are not forgotten. We pray for all those who suffer in any way, either in distress or with poor health, especially remembering those in our own congregation and any known to us personally. May they know your healing comfort, love and power and be reassured of your presence with them. And a prayer for ourselves. Gracious Father, giver of all good things, Help us not to take for granted the everyday things of our lives, our homes, our families and friends, and the material things we enjoy. As we reflect upon our lives, please keep us aware of the needs of others, and help us to walk humbly with you, our God. We offer all these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of the daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Rachel. Um, William, are you doing notices? Before William gets there, I um, just want to say thank you again for last week to Meneksha and Andrew because Meneksha cooked up a storm from Maundy Thursday. It was unbelievable. And um, 
I've never had a Passover meal for Maudy Thursday, so it was a Passover meal, that was really cool, wasn't it? Yeah, bread, unleavened bread. I mean, it was just fantastic. And then on Easter Sunday, we had fish and bread, you know, the first meal that Jesus had, and then we had lovely lamb again in the afternoon. There's so much, and it was so organised. Yeah. But I thought the kitchen would be a complete mess. Make sure having the trays out and everything was exactly where it should be. So I know they're going to hate it when I say this, but I think we should give them a round. Sunday dinner for us when my family of 16 come over because you made it so easy. I'll uh, hand over to William for the next six. This is a big breeze, isn't it? <laughs> hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to church. I'm first of all, let me just thank Liz for leading, Rachel for playing, Angie for preaching, and for our readers, and for your general congregation who's been here Sunday after Sunday. Hope that we are also blessing what we said and done today. Um, this week, birthdays. I think there's a birthday sometime this week. I think I is having a birthday this week. Wish. Anybody else have a birthday this week? I don't have the list. Brian, come forward, please. I will pray for you and sing for you. <laughs> so he's keeping it quiet. They want you to know, know his cake. Or his lamb, so he's keeping it quiet. <laughs> Anybody else beside these two? Between now and Saturday? So we'll see Happy Birthday and Andrew will come on. Pray for them. Thank you so much for Inez and for Brian and for all that they are to us and how much we value and love them. We pray for them as they enjoy their birthdays this week, that you will draw near to them and give them uh, this sense of your presence with them and that there will be a time of joy and celebration and uh, wonderful happiness and hope because of Jesus. So thank you for them. We pray for them in Jesus' name. Amen. What time the party, folks? What time the party starts? <laughs> Stairs in the party. <laughs> um, any visitors you have here this morning? Does you have any visitors? Any visitors you like to stand and say who you are? <laughs> Thank you. So, any friend of Jill, a friend of ours. <laughs> Um, Tuesday we have stay and play, Wednesday we have Wednesday Hub, Thursday we have English class, um, Saturday, if you don't have nothing to do, there's something for here for you to do on Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. Joyce and the Wednesday group have organized a games evening here, Saturday night, from 6 until 9, or maybe beyond, but from 6 until 9, um, Four pounds for adults to enter. That includes refreshments. And I was told, children, you can come in for free. So that's Saturday night coming. Nothing is on your agenda. Or clear your calendars. And be right here Saturday night. Bring your o'clock. own games if you like, but we love games. Okay, you hear that? If you have games that you want to play, you can bring them along with you. But Joyce will provide some of the games, like Snake and Adults. <laughs> <laughs> So that's for Saturday. After the service, we have tea and coffee and biscuit in the coffee bar, so don't run away. Please do hang about. Um, I'm planning a seaside trip for July the 16th to it's bright, I think it's bright. So anybody interested in going, let me know. If like I'm not here, let glory know so I can know what size of coach to get. I'm all in the coach here, but I need to know the amount so I can get the size of the coach, so that's July the 16th, a bit far off, but it's good to know early, so 
Last about if you need prayer after the service, I think some people have ever prayed in my left hand corner. That's what you notice. Anybody else add anything to add? This is all up to you. Hey. That's cheap. That game's night really is fun. Bye. If you can, you know, it's, it's not just for the kids. Bye. And it was so chilled out the last time we had it here before COVID. It was just fantastic. So if you can make it. Saturday. Do you want that, No, you can. I mean, there are so many games there, but bring some games if you want. You know, bring some, but it's really great fun. Sadly, I won't be there because I have a funeral to go to, but I will, I'll be there in spirit. And I have to go out of the country for it, so I really can't make it. Okay, so blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Would you like to stand for our final? Father, thank you for your gifts to us. We pray that these will be used for your glory. Amen. So this is the great high priestly prayer of Aaron, and it's this great Trinitarian prayer found in the book of Numbers. So let's hear these words of blessing. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for doing that, Andrew. So have a blessed week, everyone. And uh, yeah, we've got prayer over there on the left-hand side if anyone wants it. So thank you very much. Bye.